You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. Hello, I'm JJ Bull and this is Tifo IRL. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, the 442 is so rubbish, it's old fashioned. I don't like the 442. Well, let me tell you something. What have I told you? That Pep Guardiola, the coolest of all the tactics people, uh, he uses a 442 now, Manchester City. And this is what it looks like. Look at this. Manchester City, you think of Guardiola and all his 433s and everything, but they play a 442. And we're going to look at that in this video. And the first thing we're going to do is look at how we got to this stage where Man City and Guardiola are playing a 442. So we can start right back at Barcelona, where it all began for old Guardiola, as he likes to be known. So we know uh, Guardiola's most famous Barcelona team used to play in this 4-3-3, which looks like a 4-1-2-3. Obviously, he had the boy Messi who was over here um, on the right. Now, the same principles have applied through all of Guardiola's sorts of teams. So they like to build from the back. They like to engage the opposition early. They counter-press if they lose the ball. Um, and they like to dominate space and create chances through possession. So they like to pass the ball quickly. Um, lots of rotations, lots of movement to make things work. Now, certain things that have always been in place at Guardiola's teams is that they always have to have wingers being wide and hugging this sorts of bit to the pitch here. Nine, and you, uh, the best team you had Xavi and you had Iniesta and you had Busquets as a six, also known as like a pivot basically. So the pivot is where everything goes through. So the center backs can move up and they work along with this pivot here. The full backs can come up. Now, some of their teams, once you get to this, it might look like this in a certain phase of build up, but then as we know, Messi back in the day would move inside to these sorts of positions here and you'd get the rotation where the fullback overlaps and you sort of form this, um, maybe this guy would come in here as well to form this, uh, this front five. So it's like a three, two, five kind of shape, but actually it's a two, three, five where they sort of control all of these bits of here. So what Guardiola does is he separates the pitch into different sections. Now what you have here, this is the wing space. This is the half space, this is the central space. This is the half space, this is the wing space. And the idea is that you don't have too many players in the same vertical space at any given time. And the players will move in and out of these sort of positions to do this. One of the things he did at Barcelona, which is particularly interesting, I thought, was he employed a false nine. So when you had a winger out here on the right and you had a winger out here on the left, the false nine drops into these positions, which allows movement from midfield to get into these sorts of strikers positions. And that's what, one of the things that Messi did. So the false nine is something he kind of played with there. Mostly had overlapping fullbacks. So Danny Alves was one, would get on the outside of this sort of player here. And he had like Jordi Alba, Eric Abigdal, a couple of players he's had in time, would get on the outside to allow these guys to move in. So you're always maintaining your width, always got someone in the wing space. And you've always got your midfield around here and your striker and it gives you a bit of depth. So that's what they did at Barcelona. Now, uh, he also used a 3-4-3 where you just turn the pivot, would basically become a three here and like Javi Mascarano used to do that sort of thing. And again, he's had this sort of three, two shape with a five up here and then the numbers don't matter. So let's look now at, Bar uh, at Bayern Munich when he moved to Germany. So at Bayern Munich, when uh, Guardiola arrived there, uh, Jupp Henkes had been playing a 4-2-3-1 with this guy here, but Guardiola had moved it back to that more familiar 4-1-4-1. And obviously the four is this midfield line here that I can't draw all of a sudden. The four is this line here. So it's a four, oh my word. It's a four, one, four, one. That's the shape. One of the things that Guardiola did with Bayern Munich is uh, played with his fullbacks and did some different things with this. So we, we learned about the false nine that he'd also used in Germany. Um, which he used with Messi at Barcelona. But now what he had was to start to play with his fullbacks. And in German football, transitions are kings. So all the teams are amazing at playing on the counter-attack. So what he started doing, because he had Philip Lamb and he had uh, David Alaba, the two fullbacks, they, they were great at getting into these positions here and putting crosses into the box. That's something they could do. Now that kind of thing there. You've got Lewandowski in the middle, obviously, to play with that. But what they could also do is move inside the pitch because Alaba and Lamb are both excellent midfielders. So when Bayern moved up the pitch, your wingers here like this, see ro robbery, uh, robbery, Ribery and Robin, robbery, Ribery and Robin. Six here, these guys can push up. So Alaba can move into midfield to join the six 
and Lamb can move into midfield to join the six. It's called like an inverted wing back, or a, I think it's called a half back or something. The name doesn't really matter. But you see, they leave the space here and they have this bit of the middle pitch kind of guarded. And it's to do with being able to stop opposition counterattacks quicker or higher up the pitch. So if the, the high press, if these guys aren't able to um, win the ball from a counter press, if they lose the ball, straight away, you're already, rather than having fullbacks here or out wide, where they're trying to support something like this, you have the midfield structure in place to be able to stop a counterattack early at source. It also means you just got kind of coverage of the pitch with your, your midfield there. Now, um, this is sort of what he did at Bayern with Alaba and uh, Alaba and Lamb. But also, sometimes what would happen is that maybe Alaba would move in to be a three, like this, and then there'd be a six here, joined by maybe Philip Lamb. And so you form a three, two. So the shape goes from being a four, one, four, one, like this, obviously spread out over the whole pitch. Lamb moves into midfield, say, Alaba moves across, and then you get this kind of 3-2, 2-3 uh, two, shape. If you see, it's like a, this kind of thing. It's your 3, 2, 2, 3. So these were the sorts of things we saw at Bayern Munich and at Barcelona, and they now apply 100% at Manchester City. Let's look at Manchester City. So at City, it's a 4-3-3, or 4-1-4-1, same sort of shape. Uh, he's played a 4-2-3-1 as well and a back three, but you see the same things that you've seen at Bayern and Barcelona, where the fullback Cancelo moves into midfield to join a three. So Jenko comes in as well. So this is where your two-three comes in. I'll give you a line so you can see the two and the three. It's the two and the three. Then the midfielders can come here and you keep your width here. So the same principles in place. Always have two wide players to stretch the defense. Have a nine, sometimes a false nine. And then you've got midfield runners the free eights, they're often referred to as, and then this midfield, which is actually made of fullbacks, is, niche, is what they can do. But also the fullbacks, when it's appropriate, can then make overlaps or underlaps, and the whole thing's meant to be completely fluid, and the rotations are meant to be all over the place. But it's become a 4-4-2. Let's look at what Man City's 4-4-2 works, because that's not a 4-3-3, it's different. Now this is how City lined up against Spurs in their first game of the season, it's in a 4-4-2. Um, now, Jack Grealish isn't a striker, and Ferran Torres he maybe sort of is, but you think more of him as like a, a winger who plays to the middle, even though it doesn't make sense. But you've got Sterling, Mares, Torres and Grealish, all as attacking players here, but also Kunigun is an attacking player here in this sort of system. And there's things that we've noticed or we've seen in the past, so we talked about just before about the, the fullbacks can either go outside or inside depending on the phase of play, but also what you get now are lots of rotations with these front four, because rather than one false nine, which is what you had at Barcelona or at Bayern Munich, now you've got two. And we saw this um, throughout the Spurs game and we've seen it in different games in the past where they played this 4-4-2. Now, it's not a straight 4-4-2, this is a Guardiola version of it. So initially you might think he's trying to do like an Enrico Sacchi thing where it's a very compact block. And Sacchi's AC Milan team is a very compact, very high line. Again, it's one of the principles of Guardiola's teams. They play a very high line. They're going to be compact out of possession. But what we had was Cancelo and Mendy were largely playing as kind of inside um, fullbacks, kind of like this with uh, Ferrandino in the three. So we see that the fullback goes into a midfield three like this to protect against the counter-attack. And then Gundogan's joining in with these guys here. So Mares you put up here, Torres here, and Grealish here, and Sterling here. Here's an example of when they're playing against Spurs. Spurs were playing in a 4-3-3. Now what would happen in build-up, we'll go over here say, is um, Fernandinho as the six here. So he's, in, he's basically the pivot. Spurs play with a narrow front three up here to try and counter-attack against it behind this sort of gap. And you see the shape the back four is made. Like that. That's your back four. Which is pretty much how you want them to be. So Grealish and Torres kind of starting as strikers, but they're not really strikers. And what happens is that when they're trying to build play, Sterling's over here, but they're gonna, Spurs are going to try and block him out. So Tanganga, who is the right back, will go out and try and deal with Sterling here. This is, this is them largely looked after with this shape. And Fernandinho, or Grealish wants to get on the ball, but what he does instead is he runs out wide, makes a sort of run, let's give him a, a run. 
makes this curved run around the outside of Sterling. And when he does that, now Tanganga has got a decision to make and he has to go pretty much go and close Grealish. But when he goes to Grealish, that creates this space between the centre back as well. And that is then what Sterling uses to move to get into. And suddenly the pass that wasn't onto Grealish because it was blocked is now on to Sterling and Sterling can get into the in behind the the defence. This is what an example of the kind of rotation they're trying to do. Same thing. If you had the ball over with Cancelo, Cancelo might look to try and get say Torres wants to make this run in behind here, so we'll give you the run. Torres might make this run because it's going to drag this defender with him. And in doing that, it frees up Gundogan to come into this space here. So that's the pass you want to make. I'll be clearer with that. That's the pass that you want to make from Cancelo into here. But you can't make that pass when the defence is like this because there's too many bodies in the way. But Torres will make this dummy run. It's pretty much a rotation. Gundogan moves into there. And then either Cancelo can move into the midfield uh, slot that's been emptied or Maras can move into it. And this is the thing with this 4-4-2. It's not really a 4-4-2 because you, you really have five forwards. Torres, Gundogan, Sterling, Grealish. So that's your five. That's your two, that's your three. It's the same attacking shape that you'd probably have at Barcelona and at Bayern Munich, but it starts in a different way. It's a 4-4-2 that changes. The numbers do not matter at all. It depends entirely on who they're playing against and how they're going to play. So it's not that City always play a 4-4-2. They have kind of played a 4-2-3-1 sometimes, and the shape changes, like we say, the numbers don't matter. But the 4-2-3-1 becomes a 4-4-2 when you're engaging in certain parts of the pitch. Like, for example, one of the first times I think I really noticed this was against Real Madrid uh, in a game where they played Gabriel Jesus on the left. Now, the team sheet looked kind of like, this isn't exactly the team, but Jesus was on the left. It looked a bit like a kind of 4-4-1-1, that sort of shape like this. This is your four, is your one, and your one. But really, they were, they were defending a lot of the time in this 4-4-2. This is an away game at the, the Bernabeu uh, that they won 2-1, I think. It may also have been at home. That doesn't matter which bit that is. Basically, they beat Real Madrid and they had his use doing an awful lot of defensive work because he's a striker. And a lot of the game, his use was getting to these central positions. So you'd have the forward three and you'd have the wide players to support. But in defence, it was particularly interesting, was that they would defend in this kind of 4-4-2 shape and Jesus would track the right back of Real Madrid, it was Danny Carvial at the time, dangerous player in their system. So then this back four would become a five because they would constrict and Jesus would track this run. So they knew that Danny Carvajal was going to make this run up to give Real Madrid their width because that's how they played. So when he gets up here, that would then leave Zinchenko with a problem to pull out, which would then let the wingers, one of the best players they've got, to get into these spaces created between the fullback and the centre back. So what they did instead was have Zinchenko, Stones, Diaz, and Walker keep compact as part of their back four, so the spaces between the players are, are minimised. Then you have your back two comes back here. I keep drawing all over the pitch. But your midfield two comes back in. Marez was very disciplined in this as well, making sure he was maintaining the midfield uh, line. But his use would come back to like this, right? So then you've got a back five formed here with a three. It's kind of like a lopsided 5-3-2. Again, it's not that Man City are playing a 5-3-2 or a 4-4-2. They're playing all of them at once. It's just dependent on the players they're playing against and the system they're up against. And that was just one another example of how they've done that in the past. They've used it against PSG. They've done it in the league a few times. Um, yeah, there's other times I've noticed it. There's an awful lot of scribbles going on here, but I think the point is that Guardiola essentially perfected the style of football that he wanted at Barcelona, that kind of Spanish way, short passing, control possession, dictate the space, high line, engage early, that sort of stuff. Went to Germany where it's a different style of football. It's more transitional, counter-attack. That's what the German kind of way is. It's really fast and powerful. And he had to adapt. So he changed things like bringing in the inverted fullbacks and even going man-to-man -man sometimes with a 3-3-4 like doing this sort of thing where you just have man-to-man -man across a team playing out of the back with a back three. Be adapted and changed it, put his own stance, his own like slant, I should say, onto that German style of football. And now in England, he's gone and put all his principles of play, all the same things he's had throughout, false nines, inverted wingers, overlapping fullbacks when you need it, everything there. But he's done it in, I would say, probably the most English way you could possibly do it, a 4-4-2. And I think that's quite cool, don't you? 
That's all I have to say in the 442. Have a lovely time. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do enjoy TIFO, then you'll probably also like The Athletic. If you watch our tactics videos, you should go and read Michael Cox. If you're into data, read Tom Warville. And if you're into transfers, it's David Ornstein. Plus, if you're a fan of any Premier League team, then there's a journalist dedicated to you, and you can try it for free for 30 days now by clicking the link in the description.